Hello and welcome to another segment of Women's Health. My name is Kathy Ermacher. I ser currently serve as the chair of the Marist Commission on Women and the president of the Women's Foundation here in Lincoln and Lancaster County. Today we're going to continue talking about domestic and sexual violence in our community. And specifically today, we're hoping to talk about what we as individuals can do, again, what our partner Voices of Hope is doing, and then also what other businesses and community members can do. So today I'm joined by Morgan Beal, who is the, let me get this right, prevention specialist Correct. at Voices of Hope. Welcome, Morgan. Thank you for having me. And Jan Gauger, who is, I'm sure many of you know, very important in our community and also a board member at Voices of Hope. Yeah, absolutely. Thank okay. You. Welcome, Jan. It's great to have you yeah. on our program. Nice to be here. And Marcy Metzger. And Marcy mm -hmm. is the Executive Director of Voices of Hope. If you have not seen one of our previous programs, please go to the Women's Foundation website which is lincolnwomen.org. And you can see the program that we did previously to this, talking about Voices of Hope and all the many wonderful things that Voices of Hope does and the services for women and men in our community. So welcome again, Marcy. We're and glad to have you, you here. thank you for saying those things. Great. And this is Jeff Debris, who is joining us today because he is an associate director at Verizon. And Verizon is a very important partner for Voices of Hope. And Voices of Hope has a very special thing going this year. This is their 40th anniversary, and we're so fortunate in our community to have an agency like Voices of Hope who are advocating for those who have been victimized by vo domestic and sexual violence. Jeff is here to talk about what Verizon has been doing with Voices of Hope. So welcome, yeah. Jeff. Thank you. Okay, great. Marcy, let's go back and just review really quickly what Voices of Hope does for those of our viewers who perhaps don't know that. And then would you talk a little bit about the 40th anniversary? I'd be happy to. Voices of Hope has been in the community for 40 years, providing crisis intervention, advocacy, and safety planning for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. But we also do things with individuals who've experienced stalking, human trafficking, gang-related sexual violence, bullying, sexual harassment, so all, all kinds of abuse. Um, primarily, we work with women who've experienced these issues, but I, about, this, about the, uh, 2014, I think 13% of the individuals using our services, which was more than 2,000, were men. Right, and we know that even though it's mostly women, that we are talking about men in our community as well, and so this is a community health issue. In a previous program, we talked a lot about the fact that these issues have a great deal to do with health, and that it's very appropriate for us to be talking about it on a women's health program, because we're talking about psychological health, mental health, but also physical health. Um, and I think that that's important too. I know that you have a new social media campaign. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, this is a part of our 40th anniversary. We really felt very strongly that we did not want to be in business for another 40 years. And so if we were talking about what it was, all of the wonderful things that we've been able to accomplish in these last years, we were also looking at all the, the challenges that people had faced and knew that our agency has always been one that's believed so strongly in collaborations. So for us, when we were talking about the 40th, we really wanted to figure out how everybody could get involved in ending violence, how they could be involved as a bystander, how they could be involved as a community member, how could they be involved as a donor. And we started this campaign with um, a grant that we had from Verizon to be able to educate the community, not only that our services were available, so somebody who in the audience is experiencing this would know how to get a hold of our agency and people would know how to make a, a good, safe referral. But we also wanted everybody to know that they have a role in ending the violence in our community. And so this campaign, hashtag I am a voice, is a social media campaign trying to get everybody involved. That's great. Well, and Morgan, as a prevention specialist, obviously that's what we're talking about because we really want to work towards prevention as much as, as some of the other things. And so tell us a little bit about what a prevention specialist does and how does hashtag I am a voice fit in with what you do? Sure. Well, as Marcy mentioned, Voices of Hope has been providing these intervention services for 40 years in our community. Um, and they're important and they're necessary. But more so than ever before, we're starting to have conversations about how do we actually 
actually prevent relationship and sexual violence, which is an important dialogue to be having. So as the prevention specialist, my role is really focusing a lot on students, middle, high school students, even college age students, on preventing relationship and sexual violence. So I work with them in a school setting, but with also youth agencies, different camps that are happening, and we have really honest conversations about healthy relationships. What do they look like? What are the qualities and characteristics that you should be looking for in these healthy relationships? So we spend a lot of time talking about the equality wheel, the diagram to describe um, nonviolent and safe relationships. But we also have conversations about conflict resolution. So when these conflicts and these arguments arise, which they do with our partners, how do we handle them fairly, respectfully, without resorting to violence or name calling? We have conversations about bystander intervention. We know a lot of people will never be a perpetrator of these crimes. A lot of people won't be victims, um, but we've all been a bystander at some point. We've all witnessed something we felt uncomfortable with, that we knew was wrong, and we wanted to say something, but there was a barrier in place to doing so, and we know there's a lot of those. So we want to empower people um, to say something if they see something problematic, to really address that um, head on, whether that's directly in the situation or delayed after the fact, um, making sure that that person knows about services and resources in the community. So it's empowering them to use their voice. Um, we also have conversations about media literacy, so really dissecting and analyzing these media messages and what they say about healthy and unhealthy relationships, because that has a big influence. That is really true. Yeah. I think yeah. today we are so bombarded by so many different mixed messages that are coming from everything yeah. from video games to Songs. even prime time television exactly. shows exactly. that it's really important for and s and music and yeah. it's really important for us to have those kinds of conversations about healthy mm -hmm. relationships that's, and, that's and teaching integral. students to be critical consumers right not just blindly consuming all of this media but saying okay what are they really saying here what's the message behind this so we do a lot of activities around that gender norms social norms so it's about having these conversations and I think it's about having them early you know really working with youth on a consistent consistent basis and having that consistent messaging. That's great. Yeah. And do you feel that the schools, um, particularly the schools, I'm asking, but it, every group, but do you think particularly the schools are receptive to these new conversations and this new direction? Absolutely. Um, since we started this prevention program in 2012, the schools have been so receptive to having somebody come in, and not just for a one-time presentation. Doing classroom presentations on an ongoing basis, but also partnering with different clubs at schools to implement programming activities throughout the year, not just on a one-time event, which we know is important in the prevention work. So middle schools, high schools, um, youth-based um, agencies have been really um, receptive and, and ready to get involved. So that's been very nice. That's great. So tell us a little bit about the hashtag I am a voice yeah. and how you use that or incorporate that in what you do. So we launched this social media campaign in April officially, and it's the hashtag I am a voice. So we've been really um, trying to empower all members of the community. I've been working a lot with the students, but we've been working with businesses, organizations, elected officials, sports teams, and really empowering them to use their voice to end violence in our community. And I think it's really powerful when you tell students, even the middle and high school students, you play a role in this. You have agency in ending violence in our community. So we've been setting up our photo booth um, in a lot of different locations, and we've been using these speech bubbles, and students have been writing down how they'll use their voice. And it's been so inspiring to see all of the different ways because they get really creative. Um, and it's been really great to see that. And then we've been encouraging them to share their picture on social media with the hashtag I am a voice. And if you check that out on Instagram or Facebook um, and search the hashtag I am a voice, you can see all of the different ways people are using their voices. And I know the Women's Foundation and the Women's Commission were yes. part of that. We were very yeah. proud to be a part of that. Absolutely. So, and it has been really interesting to see what the, the bubbles say. Yeah, and I would really encourage everyone to go look at some of them and yeah. read them because they're really very powerful. Yeah, it's been really exciting. We took the campaign to Southeast High School, Irving Middle School, the Women's Foundation participated, Verizon employees have been participating, um, and we hope to continue this campaign um, throughout the fall. So um, even those that are watching uh, can take a quick selfie and share how they'll use their voice. <laughs> well, some of us could take a selfie. <laughs> some of us are gonna have to call you and say, come over and help us out, right? <laughs> Okay, Jan, let's talk a little bit about what 
an individual in the community what I mean obviously we can be a part of the hashtag I'm a voice campaign which I think a lot of people will be excited to be a part of but what do you see as individuals that we can do well it's unlimited really uh, what individuals can do whether they're board members or just uh, community members because there's so many opportunities to support this program uh, not the least of which is to donate money which uh, is very necessary in order to carry out the kind of programs that exactly we're doing but um, in, in addition to that um, just supporting the program supporting the staff trying to educate the community first of all that there is a problem because a lot of people want to just hide their eyes and pretend that there's no need for this program and I, I wish that were true and I hope some someday it will be but it certainly is needed and it takes everyone in the community to to combat it so in any way that an individual can do whether you're a mother or a grandmother like I am and you talk to your children and your grandchildren I have five grand sons and four granddaughters and I, I want them to grow up being very uh, understanding of the opposite sex and knowing that violence has no place in in our community so that's one thing you can do uh, I've often uh, not often but I have also invited neighbors and friends in to hear into my home to hear the staff and to talk about the program so that's another thing that you can do uh, we have a number of fundraising opportunities where we need volunteers and we're always happy to have anybody come and or call and say what can I do to help because there's so many opportunities but it's important to support the staff and let them know that we in the community appreciate what they're doing and understand how important it is. That's great. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. And welcome back to Women's Health. Today we're talking about what we as individuals, businesses, community groups can do to work on the problem of domestic and sexual violence in our community. We're talking with Voices of Hope staff members, board member, and a community partner. And I'd like to go now to Jeff Debris, who is from Verizon, and he is going to talk about how the Verizon partnership with Voices of Hope has worked and give some examples of how businesses have been involved. Yeah, so at Verizon, we really, we really believe in using the power of technology to address critical social issues. So with that, since 2001 nationally, we've uh, really focused on uh, the prevention and the awareness of domestic violence. Uh, one of those uh, things that we use is our Hopeline program. And with our Hopeline program, uh, we take donated phones uh, from any carrier, any condition, and we take those and we recycle them in an environmentally friendly way. And then we, uh, we use that and uh, the, what we get from donations from those, we use that as uh, grant money uh, to give back to community members and um, you know, um, different facilities or different operations such as Voices of Hope. So with that, um, the, even just this last, uh, recently we were able to give a $35,000 grant uh, to Voices of Hope uh, for their anniversary celebration. And each year, I think for the past five years, we've had uh, representatives from our call center go out and um, donate their time and volunteer for the summer concert series uh, where we go out and we go out into uh, the audience and help collect donations. And then Verizon matches up to $2,500 of those donations from uh, the community members. Okay, and that will happen again this summer? Yes, it will, in August. In August, yep. okay. And that's at South Point, yes, right? Yes, at South Point. Okay, so that would be something that we can all do then is go to the South Point Concert Series, which is yeah. fun to do anyway, and ha donate then to Voices of Hope that way. Yes, correct. Okay, wonderful, great. Well, we do appreciate the work that Verizon has done, and I know that people are aware of the cell phone recycling campaign, mm -hmm. but this is a good way of reminding people that that's a very important way that you can 
that we can give back and that's that's something easy to do right? yeah and we have they can donate at any of our corporate stores uh, they can go to our call center out at 4600 innovation drive and donate the um, old you know phones even accessories and like i said they can be from any carrier in any condition and donate those phones and ultimately that gives back um, you know to organizations like voices of hope so they also give the phones to our, our clients which yeah. i think is really critical so not only do they raise money to, to give out grants for both this uh, prevention campaign, but they also um, give us phones that individuals who are fleeing a domestic violence situation are able to have a number of text minutes and minutes to be able to call their attorney or the police or other family members for support. And that ties really closely into what we do to empower people every day to be able to be safer in their homes and be able to make choices of being able to leave their homes um, when, it, when there's violence. Um, Verizon's program also gives a great example of how businesses get involved. I mean, not only have they have employee matches, both with time, volunteer time, some of their employees, so I think one of them organized a car show, and yep. somebody else came and mowed our lawn, and somebody <laughs> else did, you know, collected diapers at their church because they heard about the program at Verizon. And I think that's one of the things that all businesses, when they're talking to employees about this being something that impacts at the workplace, it makes a difference when somebody is up all night because they're afraid, or is having some kind of chronic health issue because of the violence in their home that it does impact daily at people's workplaces. So when businesses are willing to call and ask for our staff to come out and educate their human resources individuals, know more about protection orders, be able to understand if something like this happens, how to be able to respond in an effective, safe manner, that's really critical. So we use um, everybody. I mean, we want everybody to be involved in ending the violence, but also making sure that our services are available and that people can get to those services um, safely uh, effectively. We work very closely with all the schools and so it may be the principal has now had somebody served with a protection order and they're wanting to figure out other safety planning for the protective parent. Typically it's mom, sometimes it's dad, but it's making arrangements so that knowing how to how to protect the child that's witnessing the violence but also to be able to do a protection order or a safety plan. Voices of Hope is really tied into a lot of co community coordinated responses here. And I think it's critical that people understand about that. We do have a crisis line, and when you have more than 10,000 calls through your crisis line, we know people know about it. But I don't know that they always know that you could walk in our door Monday through Friday, and somebody would be there to be able to help with a safety plan. Or if it's somebody who's bringing in diapers because they've collected them or are interested in being a volunteer on our crisis line, that they can call or come in and we, we want them to be there. <laughs> and so I think we really try to make sure that our um, facility, the places, the is two houses that are hooked together, and it kind of feels like your grandma's house. You feel like it, you come in, people have coffee, and and are able to know that there's a safe place, whether the police come to take a report or whether it's being able to tell a youth that that has told Morgan that they want to talk to their parents about it. Maybe that the parents and youth show up together to be able to talk about this. So, Voices of Hope is really a critical organization for people to know about in our community and I and we're, we're really excited about having people be very involved in this campaign. That's great. You mentioned the crisis line. Now is that something that people can volunteer to be part of? Absolutely. We do training three to four times a year. Um, we do 20, We have a 24-hour crisis line so you can imagine how many people it takes to cover every 365 days a, a year. We provide people with 34 to 36 hours of training so that when they're on the, f on the line that they know what to say, how to listen carefully, know what res resources are available in the community. Um, be able to be able to be empowering and respectful to the person who's calling. We have um, family members, we have clergy, we have individuals that are the neighbors that just want to know how to talk to somebody about these issues. And so the crisis line, while it does deal with a lot of individuals who are 
wanting to leave for shelter that night or wanting to know what to do because now they're out at the gas station and they're calling to figure out what are they going to do next and whether they call the police or whether they're going to go to the hospital. Those kinds of things do happen through the crisis line. But it's also all of those individuals who want to know how to talk to somebody that they love and they're afraid for. And so it's it's one of those things that we need individuals who, who will answer the line but will also go out in the community and tell other people that they're safe, effective services for them. Mm -hmm. So often when we see something in the media or like in the news and there's a big event or some real tragedy, then I think it makes people realize that there is a problem, but I'm not always sure that they realize that this is also a day-to-day -day ongoing thing. It isn't just the occasional story that ends up on the news, but it is a lifestyle that many people have had to live through many, many years. Mm -hmm. So it's important for all of us to realize that there, there is a way to change that. It doesn't have to keep on happening. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's important too. But I, I really especially liked what you talked about, Morgan, with prevention, because just because it's something that's happening doesn't mean it should continue. Mm -hmm. But if we can stop it mm -hmm. before it happens. Do you feel that you experience when you go out to talk to people about this that there is a culture of violence that's perhaps more pervasive than it used to be or is it just that we're more aware? You know, I don't know if it's more pervasive, but we're certainly aware of it. And those national stories allow us to have a conversation about what's happening. So, you know, for example, I'm thinking of the Ray Rice incident and the NFL football. Exactly. We were able to have a conversation about this because it was happening on this national scale. And so I found it very effective to use examples like that to really engage youth to talk about it, especially young men and boys. And um, sometimes the culture of violence that we see within different populations, right? It doesn't only happen in sports, but we know we see it there. And being able to talk about those sort of national stories allows us to have this broader conversation about what can we do? How do we respond to victims? Because that was a major point of that story as well is, you know, why did she stay? You know, which is a question we hear a lot. That so, is a question we hear a lot. So it's a teachable moment and it, and it allows for us to have honest conversations, age appropriate conversations with youth. That's good. That's a very good point. So when we talk about businesses, one thing that I want to mention is that the Women's Foundation uh, about a year and a half ago came up with a domestic violence awareness campaign. And one thing that we created were called Barrels for Basics. One thing that we have mentioned on that program is that many of the times when people come to Voices of Hope, they are looking for advice and information, but they might also make it easier if they had some basic things. Like for example, I think that Marcy mentioned diapers, and sometimes young women can come to Voices of Hope under the guise of youth needing some diapers, although they probably do, and then um, they can leave with that. But those are not things that Voices of Hope has on a regular basis. So what we did is we created the Barrels for Basic campaign. These are large blue barrels, plastic barrels, that have a list of some of the things that Voices of Hope can really use to be able to give to the people who come to um, ask for their services. And also, we then can take those out and put them into businesses like Verizon or a lot of other places. And so another thing that can happen is you can either contact the Women's Foundation or Voices of Hope and we will arrange for you as a business or a community organization or an agency. I know that we did some in churches. We would love to have an opportunity to bring those to your business or your community agency or organization and have you then do something to help this campaign by adding to the Barrels for Basics. And it can be anything from um, toiletry articles like shampoo and conditioner for the emergency escape kits or it can be items for children. Examples were crayons and markers and coloring books that the children can use perhaps when a parent has got to go to court or a parent is in a counseling situation and they need bags that are appropriate for children and various ages of children. So those are some of the things 
that again, you can do as an individual or an agency or a business, and we would be glad to provide one of those to you. Lincolnwomen.org gives you some information, but you can certainly contact Voices of Hope and they will get you one of those sparrows. Okay, so Marcy, would you like to add anything else or Jan or Jeff, is there anything else that you would like to add? I just think it's important for if, if someone's listening to this program and they're wondering what they could do to help. If they belong to a club or they belong to a community organization, they could start the conversation by having someone from Voices of Hope come and speak to them, uh, give them a, a chance to have this conversation in other uh, opportunities. So. Okay, great. Jeff? I think for you know, companies, it doesn't matter how, how big they are. You know, the size of the company, I think uh, one of the things is to make sure they have a plan in place, right? For their employees, their employees' family members, things like that, and to, to build those partnerships proactively and not wait for something to happen. That's great. So. And if they can't give a lot of money, yeah. they can certainly do a lot of other things, right. which we've talked about. And sometimes small companies may think, well, you know, I can't make that kind of a donation, but it doesn't have to be the money, but right. that can be a lot their of other time. things. And to be really aware and sensitive to their own employees. Yep. Great. I yep. want to add one last thing, if that's all right. Okay, <laughs> sure, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I think to uh, all the people that are sitting out there in the audience, and many of those will be experiencing violence in their own lives. And so whenever we're out community talking about this, we want to absolutely be sure that everyone knows that our services are free and confidential and safe and empowering and that when you come in, you don't have to tell us your name or you can tell us an alias or you can come in as the mother of somebody that's experiencing this or the husband of somebody whose daughter was assaulted. I mean, all of these things, we really feel like that um, that needs to be ex as accessible as possible. So when we're talking about the things that people can do, not only knowing where services are available and understanding that the, how to get to us, which is at 2545 N Street, but, but we also want people to know that when you speak up and tell somebody that, that you're afraid for them or that something is happening in their homes, to understand that it may be a situation where they can't leave that day. There's lots of barriers that are in place. So we go back to Morgan's statement about why do someone does somebody stay? It's really important that we understand that people know that there's services and things available in the community, but also not judge and be respectful of people's personal experiences as they're going through sure. healing from the violence. So all of those that are in the audience knowing that we don't just deal with physical and sexual violence, we also um, talk a lot about psychological abuse. Um, and that sometimes people say this is not as serious because it's just psychological, but the type of tactics of control and violence that individuals use are life altering and oftentimes create all kinds of chronic health issues. So we're, we don't want anybody to be alone. So not only do we not want you to be alone if you're experiencing the violence, but we also want you to come with us <laughs> and be a part of making a difference. That's great. Well, and like I said, this is an incredibly important agency and you do so much for the community and we really appreciate your being a part of this program. I just want to remind you that this is Morgan Beal, who is the Prevention Specialist at Voices of Hope. Jan Gauger, thanks for joining us, Jan. And Jan is a board member of Voices of Hope. Marcy Metzger, the Executive Director. And then we've been joined today also by an Associate Director at Verizon, Jeff Debris. Again, this has been Women's Health, and thank you for joining us. Please be sure to contact us if you have any questions about domestic or sexual violence in our community. We would also ask you to go to lincolnwomen.org to access any of our other women's health programs. Again, I'm Kathy Ermacher, and thanks for joining us.